Kamado is a useless loser without any powers despite studying in school full of talented students. His life changes when he starts using strategies in battle. With that, he starts winning battles and gets to riz multiple girls to make a harem for himself. A helicopter is flying in the area and reporting that a battle similar to the warring stated period is taking place. Kawakami Academy has adopted martial arts into its curriculum and the current policy includes settling every dispute by means of martial arts and this event is called fight outs. Currently, the class 2 seconds and class 2F are engaged in a battle. Just as the commander of class 2 seconds is about to charge, one of their members gets a report that their forces on the front line are getting overpowered. It is all thanks to Kazuko, Christiane, Miyako, and Yuki of Class 2F. While the troops are fighting the battle on the front lines, Yamato present at the general staff headquarters is taking the role of the tactician. His comrades ask him about the result of the battle as Class 2 seconds still has an ace up their sleeves while 2F has used their trump card already. However, he doesn't seem concerned and is confident that they will be the victors in the end. Seeing how the frontline forces of 2F are demolishing their forces, the commander of Class 2 Seconds loses his cool and orders the Fushikawa unit to advance. Meanwhile, the reporter asks the principal who is present in the helicopter about the battle that is currently taking place. The old geezer replies that the first rule in this battle is whichever side captures the enemy's commander wins. The second rule is that only weapons provided by the academy can be used. The third rule is that the teams can recruit up to 50 unaffiliated people from the academy. On the other hand, the class members inform Yamato that Class S has 900 people while Class F only has around 500. However, the main difference is that many of the Class S members are reluctant while Class F is overflowing with the spirit to win. Katakatsu tells Kazuko to retreat as they have dealt enough damage and the enemy's main force is bearing on them. The good-for-nothing commander of Class 2 seconds decides to follow them even when his comrades think that it could be a trap. Suddenly, the Class 2 Seconds commander starts getting attacked by forces from all directions and Tadakatsu tells Kazuko that it is time to attack as well. Yamato, who is looking over the battle from the headquarters, informs the others that military power isn't everything and strategy is an important part as well. This reminds him of the time when promised to become a great tactician using his intellect and go out with Momoya. Afterward, he orders to mobilize the second company to attack the Fushikawa Vanguard. Suddenly, they receive a report that the main headquarters where the commander is present is under attack. The maid girl army attacks them and Chika tells Mayo, who is the commander, to hide in one of the barrels. They manage to find the commander and are about to defeat her but luckily, Yuki arrives and defeats all of them. The whole maid army surrounds her but Yuki manages to defeat them using her intense strength. The Fushikawa unit receives a report that the troops stationed at the rear have betrayed them. To make up for the traitors, she sends some of her troops to the rear. This gives Shoichi and the others the perfect opportunity to bring down the Fushikawa unit. Kokoro uses the commotion to her advantage and decides to run away just to later run into Christy. On the other hand, Tadakatsu and Kazuko start getting overwhelmed by Class 2 Seconds forces when suddenly they are attacked by bows. Turns out that Miyako arrived to assist them from afar. Later, Kazuko receives a video of Yamato teasing poor Kokoro who was captured earlier. Finally, all the forces arrive and they are about to target the commander of Class 2S. Everything is going according to plan when unexpectedly, Momoyo arrives and plans to fight Class 2 Fahrenheit. Even though she is a part of Class 2 Fahrenheit, she wants to fight them as it is more fun this way. Yamato arrives as well and tells Momoyo that she will be the one losing as he has a plan in mind. Yuki steps forward to fight Momoyo but she is not the only one. A helicopter passes by and Ajaha jumps down from it. Both of them start fighting Momoyo but still can't seem to get the upper hand. Momoyo dashes in and holds both their hands. She uses a fire ability on one of them and an ice ability on the other. However, another contestant intervenes and disrupts her attack. It is none other than Tsubane, the last of the four Devas. She manages to land an attack on Momoyo but her strength alone is still not enough. Yuki and Ajaha decide to join the battle as well. While these three are holding Momoyo, the other members of Class 2F decide to attack the commander of Class 2S. They soon notice that the enemies have a huge number advantage, but Yamato couldn't care less. He rushes in alone and the robot called Cookie decides to join him. Yamato orders it to attack thin and wide and the robot starts wrecking the enemy defense line. Meanwhile, Yamato manages to dodge all the enemy attacks and move forward but soon ends up getting cornered. The all-brain no brawn starts getting attacked when Cookie lends him its sword. He uses it and manages to defeat everyone who is targeting him. On the other hand, Catherine is fighting with Marjit and while she gets distracted for a second, Catherine finishes the battle. Shoichi is the one to confront the commander and their fight commences. Just when Momoyo is about to land a brutal blow on Tsubane, 
the principal announces that Class 2F won the battle as the commander of the opponent team is already defeated. After their victory, Yamato visits Momoyo and informs her that the battle she fought today was a birthday present for her. He pulls out another present which is surprisingly a ring. After she wears the ring, Yamato confesses his love once again. However, similar to his previous confessions, the loser ends up getting rejected. At night, Miyako sneaks into Yamato's room and gets in bed with him. She starts hugging him just to later find out that it is just a dummy and Yamato is not even present inside the room. Meanwhile, Yamato is present at a meeting where a person asks the students to complete a job for 49 meal tickets. Yamato makes an offer to accept the job for no less than 144 tickets. Somehow, he manages to secure the job and informs all the group members about it. They all seem happy to know that there will be no need to worry about food expenses for a while. They then discuss that Shoichi is stuck somewhere in Nagoya and according to Yamato, he will not be getting any reward as he won't be helping them anyway. Everyone seems impressed by Yamato's decision as they are able to raise the price of the jobs as there is no competition similar to class 2 seconds remaining. However, Christine seems disappointed as auctions are meant to be a fair transition and shouldn't invite a con artist like Yamato. He reminds her that their group has been winning bids with lower rates just to have some fun and there is nothing wrong with increasing the price sometimes. Afterward, the girls seem concerned watching Yuki talking to her cell phone strap. She replies that an artifact spirit has possessed it, making it possible for it to talk. Suddenly, Momoyo starts choking the loser and asks him the reason he didn't come to her room even after her invitation. Luckily, it was a good choice not to go as all Momoyo wanted was to beat someone for fun. Later, she agrees to help with the job but gets furious after finding out that the job is to find a lost puppy. While most of them are pasting posters about the dog's information, Takuya and Kekuto are searching for answers on the web. They take a look at the security camera picture on the poster and figure that no one would be able to find a dog this way. Surprisingly, the dog appears in front of them and Miyako gets ready to eliminate it using her bow. Fortunately, Yamato manages to stop her and tries to catch the dog in a more humane way. They all run after it but the dog always manages to dodge them. The dog then runs into a clothing shop and gets inside the dressing room where Chika and Mayo are trying on new clothes. Kazuko and Christine try to catch the dog but he manages to get away. Yamato who is also trying to catch it accidentally gets inside the dressing room where Kiroko is present. After being kicked out, the dog visits a cafe and destroys the food of everyone present there. Meanwhile, Eijaha is investigating the organization that has been making moves in secrecy. After having a hard time trying to find the dog, they all return back home and decide to look for it later. All the girls are taking a bath together and notice that the dog is present in the bathtub as well. They start chasing it afterward and don't realize that they all went outside the bathroom. They finally manage to catch him but soon notice that Yamato is present in front of them, who saw their plot at the same time. While he is receiving a beating, the dog manages to run away and they all start following it. The dog runs into an abandoned warehouse and Momoyo breaks the door to get inside. She smashes the surroundings and the dog finally reveals its location. Miyako uses her bows to restrict his movements and the game of tag finally comes to an end. Afterward, they take a look around the warehouse and find that there are weapons lying around everywhere. They conclude that this might be a warehouse for a big merchant but these most likely are not allowed as no one sells them in Japan. Suddenly, several armed men show themselves and surround them from all directions. Momoyo picks up a machine gun and starts smacking the agent with it. The other girls start fighting them as well and use their skills to beat each and every single one of them without getting a single scratch. Afterward, Momoyo tries to get information from one of the agents but she suddenly gets attacked by someone. Momoyo manages to get away in time. Three masked fighters arrive and start fighting them. According to Yuki, they all seem skilled and the group starts having a hard time holding them off. Suddenly, they use a move that makes Momoyo realize that they are using Kawakami's techniques. This information creates even more confusion as these techniques are never leaked to outsiders, yet they know of it. Later, they all flee after throwing a hand grenade inside the warehouse. Momoyo manages to control the explosion and no one gets hurt in the end. On their way back home, the group discusses the fight they just had and how the police think that those people could be the Yakuza. Suddenly, they remember that the dog got away again and they will need to find it once more. Luckily, they all notice that the dog is standing beside Shoichi, who is feeding him some treats. Miyako is showing a cultured game she made to Yamato. It is a PC game that she wants Yamato to play and gradually falls for her. However, he gets bored of her yapping and leaves the room. The next day, Miyako sneaks into Yamato's room while he is sound asleep. She lies beside him and notices that his little spaceship is about to launch. Miyako gets excited and jumps on him but Yamato manages to get away at the last second. He throws her out of his room and Cookie asks Miyako if she failed once again. Miyako agrees and tells Cookie that she won't ever give up. The only thing she needs to do is to heal his heart which was broken when the ugly woman rejected him. 
They talk about his rejection and Yamato who is inside his room can hear everything. Afterward, everyone starts eating breakfast and they get to know that Yuki is the one who prepared the breakfast that day. Yamato praises her for making such a tasty breakfast and informs her that he would make a great wife. Miyako gets jealous and gives Yamato her croquettes. He doesn't like them with ketchup but she reveals that it is not ketchup but a spicy sauce called destroyed sauce. It seems to have around 1 million level spiciness which makes it dangerous when contacted with skin as well. Later, they all head to school and run into Kazuko and Momoyo. Kazuko reveals that after her fight at the Kawakami class wars was displayed live on the news. Fewer people are challenging Momoyo as most of them already chickened out. Momoyo decides that Yamato will be her toy for today and starts messing up his body. On the other hand, Yanpachi is present behind the girls and is trying his best to take a picture of their plot. Seeing how this is not working, Yanpachi starts moving his fingers weirdly and puts them in a strange spot. After school, Miyako and Kuki are present at the rooftop and talk about how Yamato has been acting normal even after getting rejected. Kuki thinks that the main reason behind it is the close friendship they had. Kuki seems curious about the reason Miyako likes him and she replies that he is the reason Miyako was able to come to the place where she stands. Miyako informs Kuki that she used to get troubled by kids in elementary school, and Yamato was the only one who saved her, even though there was always a risk of getting attacked by them instead. Hearing this story makes Kuki even more motivated and he puts out a plan. Its plan includes annoying Yamato while dressed up as a gangster. This is where Miyako will make an appearance and save the weakling from Kuki. This might make him fall in love with Miyako because he will look at her as the savior. However, Miyako decides to use the last resort. She plans to let her actions speak as her words are not enough for Yamato to fall for her. While Yamato is feeding the hermit crabs, Miyako appears and jumps on top of him. She ties him up and starts taking off her plot. Suddenly, Cookie arrives dressed up as a gangster. He gets confused and ends up saving Yamato from Miyako. This makes Yamato happy and he falls in love with Cookie only to later realize the scenario, followed by him kicking these two out once again. At night, Cookie asks Yamato about the reason he doesn't take Miyako seriously. He replies that he doesn't deserve to go out with her as when she used to get troubled in school, he used to be scared to save her. Yamato wasted a lot of time deciding whether he should intervene or not. Finally, he decided to fight one day and according to him, it was actually to save himself for than actually saving Miyako. Surprisingly, she is standing at the door and hears everything. Miyako gets emotional and hugs Yamato, telling him that she still likes him with her own free will. The next day, Yuki is taking a bath and having a conversation with Matsukaze once again. This time, he wants to talk about Yamato and if she actually likes him. She starts making excuses and informs that Yamato is a nice person and she feels comfortable around him. He asks Yuki about the day she first met Yamato and she starts telling him the whole story. It was her first day at Kawakami Academy and Yuki was running to school in order to reach there on time. Suddenly, she bumped into Yamato and freaked out as she messed with a senior on her first day. However, he didn't scold her and helped her stand up instead. Matsukaze tells Yuki that the only thing left for her to do is to marry the cherry boy. The reason behind this marriage is that Yamato had already seen her plot when they collided on her first day at the academy. Even though she makes up her mind to marry Yamato, it is still very hard to actually talk to him about it. He tells Yuki that she needs to do something quickly or Yamato might end up marrying some other girl. Then all she will receive are pictures of him and his wife and later the pictures of his child. This makes Yuki motivated and she wants to cheer him up and make Yamato forget about how he was rejected by Momoya. Matsukaze informs her that the only way to mend a boy's heart is to make yummy dishes for him but after a long period of thinking it over, they can't seem to reach a single dish that Yamato might like. Afterward, Yuki asks Matsukaze if there is a type of girl Yamato is interested in. He replies that he likes someone like Momoyo who is strong and can easily become friends with other people. However, it is hard for Yuki to even greet people because of her shyness and she contemplates whether she can fulfill her dream of making 100 friends. On her way back, Yamato passes by and wishes her a good night. This makes Yuki incredibly happy and she goes to sleep with a huge smile on her face. Yamato is taking a bath and gets out just to witness Miyako smelling his clothes. He tells her to go away but requests to leave the boxers behind. However, little does he know that she is actually wearing those boxers and left her plot for him to wear. Seeing how desperately he is requesting, Miyako tells him to take them off using his hands, but he doesn't give in. On the other hand, Christiane is watching Yamatamaru Dream Dairy on the TV seeing this show makes her glad that she decided to visit Japan. After watching the show, Christiane decides to take a bath and head over to the bathroom while thinking that it would be best to ask Yamato about the soul of warriors. Afterward, Christiane notices a wallet lying on the floor and realizes that it belongs to Yamato. Suddenly, Yamato walks into the bathroom after successfully securing his boxers. 
Christiane pins him down on the floor but he explains to Christiane that it is not shameful to appear commando in Japan. He further informs her that Japan used to have mixed baths and all the ladies used to walk outside. However, Japan got contaminated by Western ideas and even the show Yamatamaru Dream Dairy changed because of it. According to Yamato, back in those days no one needed to lock their doors as the villagers used to live as a family and a family shared everything with each other. After returning back to her room, Christiane realizes that she is angry at Yamato even though he did nothing wrong. Suddenly, someone knocks on her door and leaves fried tofu for her to eat. However, seeing it reminds Christiane of Yamato's Excalibur and her mood completely ruins. The next day, Kazuko is training outside and runs into Yamato who is spectating the fight between Momoyo and the person who challenged her to a duel. Momoyo starts getting hyped and the duel finally commences. The opponent tries to attack Momoyo but gets knocked out by a single punch. This frustrates her as she doesn't get a good fight and decides to release her frustration on Yamato. He manages to dodge most of her attacks and seeing how the normal punches are not working. Momoyo uses a special move. She uses the wind technique to slightly raise her skirt and the thirsty lad locks his eyes, unable to focus elsewhere. She uses this opportunity and pins him down, but Kazuko manages to save him by distracting Momoyo with cute girls. She tells Kazuko that Momoyo is only interested in girls because there is no guy currently available who is a good match for her. Afterward, Kazuko continues her training and informs Yamato that it is her dream to reach the same level as her older sister. The main thing she wants is talents as big as hers and she drinks milk every day to make sure it happens. However, Yamato reveals that even though she can never be compared to Momoyo, it is not the size that matters but the compassion. Later, Kazuko mentions that it would be awesome if he were to marry Momoyo as this way. He would become a part of their family. Turns out, Kazuko likes having a big family. Yamato asks Kazuko about her parents and she replies that they left for training and haven't returned yet. This discussion gives Yamato an idea and he informs Kazuko that she can have more members in her family if she marries him instead. She gets embarrassed and throws Yamato away. Kazuko starts running again and realizes that both of them haven't reached Momoyo's level and due to the similarities, they can make a good pair. It is nighttime. Yamato closes the door and makes sure no one is able to enter the room. Afterward, he takes out the magazine he was saving to read later and realizes that all the girl's pictures in it are replaced with Miyako's face. He goes to confess and finds that she is still working hard to ruin more of his magazines. He tries to remove her face and after realizing that it doesn't come off, he puts glue on Cookie's head and sticks her hand on it. The next day, they are on their way to school and Christiane notices that Miyako is even closer to Cookie than usual, but little does she know that her hand is still glued on Cookie's head. Afterward, Yuki comes running and gives Yamato a bento she made for him. Soon after, Momoyo also arrives and complains about going to school. She notices the bento he received and Yamato informs her that Yuki was responsible for making this as the other girls are as useless as ever. This comment prompts the other girls to give him something they were carrying in their bags as well. Seeing this makes Momoyo want to join the fun and she gives him the half-eaten hot dog as it can work as an indirect kiss. This makes all the other girls jealous and they start consuming the stuff they gave to Yamato so he can enjoy their indirect kiss as well. Meanwhile, Kokoro finally visits the school and starts getting weird looks from everyone present nearby. A grin appears on Jun's face as soon as he looks at Kokoro. She goes to confront him and asks if he is hitting on her. However, Jun replies that he is only into bald women and a washboard like her doesn't interest him. She tries to pick a fight with them but Jun shows her the video of Yamato smacking her plot. She loses her cool after realizing that this is the reason everyone is constantly looking at her and laughing. She breaks Chun's phone but it doesn't matter as the video is already uploaded on the internet. She gets pissed off and asks the Class 2 Seconds commander to arrange a rematch with Class 2F. However, he declines the offer, explaining that their class already had a battle with Class 2F and the issues between them have been resolved. He made a promise to himself to enjoy his school life after losing to Class 2F and as a self-proclaimed king, he always sticks to his rules and promises. Seeing how this didn't work out, she wanders around the school and notices Yamato who is having a secret meeting with his friends. She confronts him and challenges him to a duel but he totally ignores her and starts asking Akiro to lend him more magazines. This makes her furious and she starts choking the loser, but he manages to get out of her grip. Afterward, he calls Akiro and both of them make a hand formation for Akiro to enjoy something questionable. This is enough to convince Akiro and he agrees to give him the magazines. Later, Kokoro uses her underlings to gather information and they conclude that it would be best to make him angry as this way he might accept her challenge. Her first plan is to tease the girl Yamato likes to make him angry. She tries to confront Momoya but her terrifying presence is enough for Kokoro to think of another plan. Later, she puts a king crab dish in front of him and informs him that these are related to hermit crabs. She starts eating it in front of Yamato but he couldn't care less and walks away. 
Her next plan is to riz him by wearing a swimsuit. But even this time he doesn't react. This makes Kokoro question his identity and he proves it by showing the only proof he has. Seeing how none of her tactics are working makes Kokoro cry and Yamato tells her that she doesn't need to go this far as she is already cute as she is. This makes Kokoro lose her cool and she starts thinking that Yamato might be in love with her. As a last option, she offers him to become her servant but he still refuses. This comes as a surprise to her as everyone always wants to form connections with the Fushikawa family. She continues her mindless yapping and throws his lunch after noticing that he is completely ignoring her. Little does she know that among the food items, Momoyo's half-eaten hot dog is present as well and this makes him furious enough to accept the duel. Finally, the long-awaited duel begins and the failure keeps on getting thrown again and again but he manages to get up each time. Seeing how Yamato easily stands up each time even though he is injured starts freaking out Kokoro and she throws him away using her full force. However, he still tries to get back up and this is the deal breaker for Kokoro. She gets on the ground and starts apologizing for throwing his food away. She starts getting worried about his condition and picks him up, only to realize that he is wearing a vest under his clothes. Kokoro gets embarrassed and walks away after calling him a loser. Afterward, Momoyo arrives and takes him back home, telling him that even a vest like that can't save him from a serious attack from a Fushikawa. The next day, Kokoro arrives at school and this time, no one seems to be laughing at her. Jun informs her that her embarrassing video has been deleted from the internet and everyone who has a copy is advised to delete it as well. Yamato takes out a VHS which may look like a recording of a TV show but in reality, it is filled with plot videos. After gathering all the necessary items required to have an enjoyable session, he plays the VHS tape but finds a video of Miyako playing on the TV he realizes that an external wire is connected to the TV and it leads to Miyako's room where she is recording it live for him to watch. She tries to add him to the cast as well, but he walks away after tying her with the wire. Later that day, Shoichi informs everyone about the incoming festival and how their group will be participating in it as well. Christiane starts daydreaming about carrying the palanquin and agrees to participate in the festival. Yuki and Yamato agree as well and with this, they all start preparing for the festival. Yamato uses his contacts to gather all the resources required to make their own palanquin. After working hard for several days, the boys are finally able to make a palanquin. However, it looks similar to what guys call a sausage. Everyone needs to make a palanquin that matches the theme of the festival. And the theme this time is disease prevention and recovery. In order to spread the message correct way, they decided to showcase their own mushrooms. Yamato later informs that the palanquin is modeled after inspecting his sausage except for the size. The boys informed everyone that they decided to choose the model after playing rock paper scissors and Yamato was the one who won in the end. Seeing how down in the dumps Kazuko looks makes Shoichi offer her to ride the palanquin, but she refuses after seeing the design of it. Finally, the festival started and Akira was busy taking pictures of girls eating mushrooms. All the girls also arrive at the festival and try their best to think of the mushroom as a mushroom instead of comparing it with other things. Yamato tries to make it better by adding fried tofu on the sides, but it just ends up making it look even more realistic. Afterward, Momoyo arrives and teaches the girls the correct way to eat a candy. Akiro and the other boys notice a bunch of girls eating mushrooms in a questionable manner and start staring at them. They all start fantasizing about it until the girl decides to take a bite, which completely breaks the hopes and dreams that the boys have. Yamato returns back home and realizes that his hermit crabs escaped and he starts searching for them. Afterward, Chika arrives and invites them to her stall as they are not doing well in the sales department. The stuff they are selling is the miniature version of mushrooms which makes Gekudo think that these might be the elementary school version. Later, Chika and Mayo mention that all the mushrooms are handmade, prompting Akiro and Jun to buy them instantly. Kokoro also arrives at their stall and starts flexing the Fushikawa family's special candy. She starts mocking Chika for having low-quality candy, but Akiro stops Chika from confronting Kokoro, telling her that he has already given that rude woman a beating inside his head. Afterward, Kokoro starts using the same technique and shows Akiro the way she licks the mushroom, only to break it in half later on. Everyone gets pissed by her rude behavior and Kazuko decides to challenge her to a duel. However, the principal informs them that due to the festival, everyone will be battling each other using their palanquins. Just then, the commander of class 2 seconds brings a truck from which a big mushroom comes out. Kazuko and the others try fighting the mushroom with their tiny one. On the other hand, Yamato is on his way to the festival when he runs into a guy called Matasauri, who punches him without hesitation. Matasauri later apologizes as he mistook Yamato for a hitman. He is surprised to see that Yamato is doing fine even after taking his punch and he informs Matasauri that he is a warrior who fights with his brain instead of his hands. Apparently, Matasauri knows Yamato's father and asks if he is doing well. 
Yamato replies that his father decided to leave Japan as the country is run by corrupt politicians. Hearing this makes Matasauri disappointed, and he starts mocking Yamato's father for running away. This makes Yamato enraged and he tries attacking Matasauri just to get thrown on the ground. He asks Yamato about the thing he would do if he lived in a corrupt nation and he replies that he would do his best to change it. Matasauri walks away after telling Yamato that people only want their nation to get better and they don't care who does it. Later, Yamato finally reaches the festival where the duel is still going on. Yamato joins the forces and both of them clash their mushroom which results in both the palanquin breaking and falling on the ground. This gives Shoichi the idea to whip out his own mushroom and Hideo decides to do the same. However, the size difference is not much and Class 2F eventually surrenders. Momoyo is currently at home, bored out of her mind. She wants some powerful challenger to fight but almost all of the world champions are defeated by her and the local delinquents are scared to take her on. However, the unknown person she fought in the abandoned warehouse comes to mind and she wants to continue their fight. Suddenly, the principal arrives and steps into Momoyo's room. He seems disappointed that she has already changed her clothes. Momoyo asks the principal to fight with her but according to him, the whole city would be destroyed if the two of them decided to take it seriously. The maximum amount of time he is willing to fight is for 2 seconds. Momoyo wants at least 10 seconds, but it is still too much for the city to handle. The principal offers a 3 second battle and Momoyo agrees to it as well. However, he wants Momoyo to spend the entire day in a school swimsuit if he manages to win the battle. On the other hand, if Momoyo wins then the old geezer will be wearing the kid's swimsuit. In the end, Momoyo decides not to fight the three-second battle as it will only make her yearn for more. On the other hand, Yamato is resting by the riverside and thinking about the man who mocked his father earlier. Momoyo passes by and decides to fight Yamato. Just as she is about to attack him, her little sister Kazuko arrives and takes him away for training. Afterward, she goes to their hideout where Cookie advises her not to laze around the day. Later, Yamato arrives and tells Momoyo that he is busy thinking about a few things. Just as she is about to mess with him, Christiane arrives and tells him to watch Yamatomaru DVDs together. He tries to resist but Christiane drags him away forcefully. Later, Momoyo returns back home and run into Shoichi. As they are in between their conversation, Yamato arrives and asks if Momoyo was trying to tell him something earlier. She is about to repeat what she was trying to say but gets interrupted by Miyako who arrives and starts hugging him. She wants to go on a date and starts revealing his obsessions which force him to take her away. Sometime later, Momoyo is having lunch at a restaurant and notices Yamato walking by. She is about to call him, but Yuki catches him instead. She gives him the bento she prepared and asks if he wants to eat together. Yamato agrees and the two of them walk away, leaving Momoyo behind. Later, Momoyo is sitting by the riverside, furious at Yamato for always going away. At the same time, he arrives and asks Momoyo if she wants to say something to him. However, she doesn't reply which makes him think that something might be wrong with her. He starts insisting on hearing a reply and she finally confronts him for not giving her any importance. Later that day, Shoichi informs everyone that the school board is planning to hunt down all the magazines that are hidden inside the school. Everyone is present except for Gekudo and Moro as the two of them are against the magazine crackdown. All the girls present in the room are super enthusiastic about this crackdown and the reason behind it is because of the festival pictures made on international news. Cookie shows them some of their pictures as well where the girls are enjoying licking the mushroom. Christian gets furious and tries to smash the laptop, but it won't do any good as the pictures are uploaded on the internet. Yamato informs Momoyo that her picture is uploaded on the internet as well but she doesn't seem to care. He further asks for her help to solve the crackdown situation, but she refuses to help. Even though this is an opportunity for her to fight, she doesn't seem interested and walks away. Later, Yamato spends the whole day asking about the magazines all around town when he suddenly runs into Akira. He shows Yamato the ultra-rare magazine he just acquired and informs him that it was supplied by a girl in the arcade. The girl is done playing and walks away and Yamato decides to follow her. He keeps on following her until she reaches the harbor but little does he know that it's a trap. Her other team members surrounded Yamato and put him inside a ship. The people surrounding him inform Yamato that they are the same people they fought in that abandoned warehouse. According to the leader, they are a group that takes all the jobs no matter what it is. Unfortunately, they don't plan to let Yamato leave and pull out a rifle to put an end to him. Just as he is about to shoot, the lights go out and the four girls reveal themselves. They came to rescue their wimpy crush. Miyako tells Yamato that she saw him following a girl around and decided to investigate his actions, which led to this, to escape the situation. Their leader throws a hand grenade on the ship but luckily, everyone manages to escape unharmed. Kazuko calls the leader by the name of Shakadu and informs others that he used to be an assistant instructor at Kawakami Temple. Shakadu reveals that he taught his team everything he knew about the Kawakami style.
Finally, an all-out battle commences and everyone starts attacking each other. Miyako and Shakadu fight with projectiles when she notices that Yamato is missing. One of the cultured girls took him away and started messing with him. This makes all the girls lose their attention which results in them getting injured. Tatsuko gets straight to the point and gives Yamato a kiss which makes Miyako lose her cool. She abandons her fight and starts running towards Yamato but Shakadu used this opportunity to fire a bullet at her. Miyako manages to dodge it at the last second and it starts heading towards Yamato. Just as he is about to get shot, Momoyo arrives and saves him. She kicks Tatsuko and makes her way towards Shakadu just to be blocked by Taki. Everyone is surprised to see her as Taki is a former member of the Four Devas. She lets Shakadu go away and Momoyo shifts her focus towards her instead. Surprisingly, she is strong enough to block a powerful attack from Momoyo, which comes as a surprise to everyone. Taki finally reveals her true form and some of her body parts are robotic. Yuki informs them that she was completely human the last time they fought her which means she upgraded herself. Everyone is surprised to see Taki holding herself against Momoyo, which reveals the amount of strength she possesses. Afterward, Taki throws some attacks on Momoyo, and she ends up getting injured each time. Luckily, she uses her instant regeneration ability to completely heal her wounds and is back to her original state. Yamato and the girls praise Taki's new powers and conclude that Momoyo might not be able to defeat Taki on her own. Meanwhile, Momoyo asks Taki the reason she is siding with the villains, and she replies that she is a villain herself. Taki is the one who ordered the weapons from them but refuses to tell the reason behind it. Suddenly, Kazuko, Christine, and Yuki try to attack Taki but she manages to dodge them. However, a bow comes flying and hits her in the chest, which seems to have done some damage. It was Yamato's plan to hit her chest as he found out that it wasn't part of her armor. The next day, Aja gives Momoyo a visit and explains the events that took place yesterday. She informs Momoyo that Taki joined JSDF after retiring as one of the four Devas. Apparently, Taki was in charge of a classified operation and the enemies overpowered her, which resulted in her demise. Meanwhile, Aja has been overseeing and leading the military affairs division in the Kuki conglomerate. She informs them that guns that malfunction, high-tech vehicles that can't be repaired, and aircraft that can't fly are all sold at high prices to retired politicians. However, this affects the soldiers as the more these kinds of weapons are sold, the less there is more the army to use. This made Aja decide to make a globally competitive weapon for the soldiers of their country. The project she managed to create is called Cyborg Prosthetics. This reminds Momoyo of the fight yesterday. Even after getting hit by the bow, Taki is unscratched. She asks Saki to give information about the enemies and she tells Taki that there are a total of six enemies and the boy seems to be commanding the girls. Saki advises her to retreat but Taki wants to fight for a little longer. All the girls start attacking her again but this time, Taki uses analytics to predict their movements and manages to dodge and counter all of them. Momoyo tries to attack but gets stabbed by a bow instead. She uses instant regeneration once again and completely recovers from the stab wound. Meanwhile, Saki notices the arrival of the police and buys them some time by blocking the cops with trucks. Afterward, Momoyo does a special attack and manages to disrupt Taki's movement for a while. The girls take this opportunity and attack her. Even though Taki counters all of them, the girl manages to attach some bombs to her prosthetics and they all blow up. Back to the present, Aja informs Momoyo that cyborg prosthetics were originally developed to support injured people. The most expensive weapon an army can have is the soldiers, as the army spends a considerable amount of money to train each and every soldier and it is inefficient if that soldier ends up returning after getting injured. However, if the army can supplement their bodies with machinery so they can fight, the army can expect the return of elite soldiers on the battlefield. This idea made Aja create prosthetic limbs using the same technology that is used in cooking. Aja further informs her that Taki was chosen as the test subject for the cyborg prosthetics as she would have met her demise otherwise. She wanted to save Taki no matter what as not everyone has the amount of power she possesses. After running a few tests, Taki was able to adapt to these prosthetic limbs and the strength it gave her went far beyond anything they had expected. Taki's original powers combined with the abilities of the prosthetic limb make her a formidable opponent. After Taki gained this power, she decided to run away during one of the tests. From that point, she has been running around spreading havoc in the city. In the end, Aja asks Momoyo to stay out of it as this matter is highly political. However, the barbaric woman doesn't care and wants to defeat Taki with her own hands. Later, the Prime Minister gets the report of the incident at the harbor and tells his assistant to deploy police to take care of Taki. The assistant informs him that the police force might not be sufficient but according to the Prime Minister, JSDF won't fight properly if the enemy is their past comrade. 
The night before, the bombs didn't have an effect on Taki either and she attacked them with electricity instead. The loser ends up being the one targeted and starts buzzing due to electrical shocks. Momoyo breaks her attack and informs Taki that this battle is a fun one for her. She dashes towards Taki but her arm turns into a machine gun and starts firing at Momoyo. Afterward, she attacks her with missiles and one of them ends up hitting her body. Momoyo uses instant recovery to deal with all the damage. Momoyo seems confident that Taki won't be able to defeat her due to the instant recovery and Taki plans to see how many more times she can use that power. Later, Taki starts flying and pins Momoyo against a wall and rains an infinite number of bullets on her. However, it still doesn't affect her as instant regeneration takes care of all the damage. Taki kept on attacking Momoyo and she kept on using her instant recovery ability. Yamato notices that Momoyo might have reached her limit and tries to stop her from fighting any longer. However, Momoyo gets pumped up even more and lands a brutal attack on Taki, enough to spill some blood. Taki replies back by firing missiles at her and one of the missiles comes towards Yamato and explodes. He sustained quite a few injuries and was admitted to the hospital. The whole gang pays Yamato a visit in the hospital and begs him to wake up. Kakuto even offers to give Yamato his video collection, but he still doesn't wake up. Seeing Yamato unconscious makes Kazuko cry and she finally confesses her love. Everyone is surprised by this sudden confession and Christiane doesn't hold back as she confesses her feelings as well. Yuki is the next to confess followed by Miyako. Afterward, Momoyo pushes everyone away and reminds Yamato of the promise he made to always stay together. Suddenly, his heart rate drops to zero but slowly starts rising along with his Excalibur. The girls start beating the cultured lad and he finally wakes up. Everyone returns back to the hideout and is relieved that Yamato finally wakes up. However, all the girls are tense as every single one of them confesses their feelings without thinking anything. Yuki realizes that all the girls present in the room like Yamato which means she has even more rivals to take care of. Miyako, being the only one who revealed her love is furious when the other girls do it. Kazuko gets up and plans to visit Yamato in the hospital. However, Christiane and Miyako stop her and let her know that they won't let her approach Yamato. Later, Christiane tries to leave but the other girls stop her as well. Yuki wants to use the restroom but the girls don't let her. Everyone is sitting in front of each other, trying to find the perfect opportunity to leave. Yuki thinks that she can run towards the restroom before the other girls can catch her and decide to give it a go. She runs away but gets caught midway by the three of them. Meanwhile, Yamato is having a conversation with Cookie and tells it that he managed to minimize the damage by running away from the point of impact. He later thinks that Taki's moves were perfect as if someone was telling her the future. Cookie reveals that there is another person with enhanced equipment called Saki and she must have been the one sending data to Taki. Cookie advises him to stay away from this fight as Ajaha wants them to. However, Yamato is not satisfied with staying a loser and wants to win the fight. Later that day, Momoyo is standing on top of a skyscraper, scouting the area when Ajaha arrives and orders Momoyo to not pursue Taki any longer. However, she refuses as her goal is to take revenge for what she did to Yamato. Ajaha blames Momoyo for Yamato's injury because she was blinded by the thrill of battle and sacrificed him in the process. She then mentions that Momoyo didn't answer Yamato's confession and she thinks that Momoyo is afraid of change. Ajaha advises Momoyo that if she wants the precious things to remain the same, she must abandon her fears and fight. However, she ran away from that fight and that level of tenacity was not enough to beat Taki. On the other hand, Shakadu is treating all the group members to Sukiyaki. He informs them that importing weapons was just the beginning and they are about to start their actual work. He further informs the team that all the Switzerland citizens hold ammunition and firearms in their houses and one more thing that Switzerland has is the Swiss bank. This is where all the politicians, mafia, and other suspicious people hide their money. Shakadu has one of those accounts with billions of yen in it. Everyone starts fantasizing about the things they can buy with it but Shakadu decides to burn the paper with the bank account information. Everyone starts mocking him for being a complete idiot, but he reassures them that all the information is stored in his brain. The team members start questioning him further which pisses him off and he flips the stove on which Sukiyaki is being prepared. Afterward, he lights a cigarette and some of the fire hits the stove, resulting in an explosion. At night, Yamato is going through his phone and realizes that the harbor incident was not shown on the news. While browsing the internet, he comes across a video of the incident in which Saki can be seen standing on top of a building. Subsequently, Miyako arrives and is dressed up as a nurse. She wants to take a urine test and starts taking off his plot while the failure resists. Just then, Christine arrives as well and brings some fried tofu for him to enjoy. Yuki and Kazuko also arrive and bring him some food from their home. They all try forcing him to eat their dish first while Christiane thinks of a plan to have everyone acknowledge her relationship with Yamato. As soon as she is about to put her plan to work, 
Kazuko intervenes and tells everyone that she is secretly going out with Yamato as he always helps her train. Christy encounters it by telling them that Yamato and she stay in the room alone together to sadly watch a TV show. Yuki reveals that they both are going to get married as Yamato saw her plot the first time they met. Christine brags about being with Yamato when both of them were commando. Miyako gets furious and starts taking off her plot to get the upper hand. Suddenly, Cookie arrives and informs everyone that Taki has come out of the shadows and is creating a havoc in the city. All the girls run away in order to fight Taki. Yamato tries to stop them but everyone decides to ignore the weakling. Simultaneously, the principal arrives and punches Yamato. Meanwhile, the security forces are trying to hold Taki off, but it is getting difficult for them. Taki destroys the ground units while Saki takes care of the helicopter. Afterward, Momoyo arrives and asks Taki if she enjoys meaningless destruction and her main goal. Taki reveals that her goal is to declare war against Japan. On the other hand, the principal's punch ends up healing Yamato's injuries and he advises him to go and help Momoyo out. Christine, Yuki, Kazuko, and Miyako are on their way to fight Taki but sadly they are forced to take the train. The train suddenly slammed its brake, and the train operator announced that they wouldn't be able to go any further because of the fight that was taking place in Shinjuku. Kazuko receives a video on her phone which shows that Momoyo has already started fighting with Taki. However, one surprising thing they notice is that Yamato is on his way to the scene as well. Meanwhile, Momoyo starts climbing the building and gains a height advantage over Taki. She then runs back down and takes Taki with her, successfully performing the Kawakami-style Izuna drop. She seems confident that it must have dealt some damage, but Taki still remains unscratched. Saki apologized for not telling her about this technique earlier as she didn't have any data about it. While Taki is fighting Momoyo, Saki takes care of all the snipers aiming at Taki. Finally, Kuki and Yamato arrive and he manages to land an attack on Saki. Taki's connection with Saki breaks and she becomes concerned about her. This moment of confusion gives Momoyo an opportunity to attack Taki. This reminds Taki about her days in the special forces and when they struggled against the opponents. Meanwhile, Kuki and Yamato manage to restrain Saki and realize that Taki is struggling as she is not getting any info from Saki. Yamato realizes that this is the correct call to make and points his gun at her, ordering her to reveal her plot. However, he delays his kinks as the situation is not very suitable. Saki tells Yamato that the country he is fighting for isn't worth living let alone protecting. She informs him that their team was abandoned by Japan. On the other hand, the Prime Minister is enjoying the fight on his 4K TV when he receives a call. He orders the other person online to land the goods in the ocean as everyone is busy with Taki at the moment. At the same time, his assistant informs him about the meeting, and he leaves. Little does he know that Shakadu forced the other guy to talk with a special phone. Afterward, he gives his report to Saki and as her work is done, she decides to fight the losers. Saki uses Cookie's sword to cut the ropes restraining her and gives Cookie a kiss, which results in damaging his circuit. She steals the sword and attacks Cookie and it falls off the roof. Yamato tries to avenge Cookie but Saki easily manages to steal his gun as well and prepares to fight Yamato. Just as she is about to attack Yamato, the other girls arrive and protect him. They decide to fight Saki and take revenge for hurting Yamato and Cookie. However, their teamwork is not on par and Saki easily manages to read each and every movement. One by one she defeats all the girls. Yamato gets an idea and he tries to attack Saki but she easily blocks it. The cultured guy reveals his plot and reveals the Excalibur. He manages to land an attack using that sword. The shock from the electricity charge reminds Saki of her past memories. When Taki asked the headquarters to give them the order to attack, they told her to withdraw instead. Even though they were enemies of the nation, the orders were to let them go. Suddenly, an RPG arrived, and they all were injured because of it. Saki comes back from the dreamland and easily counters Yamato's attack. She puts a knife to his head and orders all the girls to drop their weapons. She regains her connection with Taki and tells her that she has managed to deal with the interference and is ready to give her full support. However, Taki and Momoyo decide to take their battle on the roof where everyone else is present. Afterward, Taki shows her gratitude to Momoyo as because of their fight. Her plan is one step closer to completion. Taki believes that it was a give and take as Momoyo wanted to fight a strong opponent as well. Surprisingly, she disagrees and tells her that the only reason she was fighting was to take revenge for hurting Yamato. After seeing Yamato pinned on the ground, she moves forward but the girls stop Momoyo, telling her that they won't let her put Yamato in any more danger. The battle is about to end as Saki is about to put a bullet in his head. Luckily, Ajaha appears and manages to save Yamato, and Momoyo uses this opportunity to restrain Saki. However, the ruthless robot doesn't care and asks Saki to eliminate herself. She starts firing at her, but Momoyo ends up receiving all the damage. Taki uses this opportunity and runs away after retrieving Saki. 
Afterward, they take a look at Yamato and he is still unconscious. Everyone starts remembering their memories with him and Momoyo tells every girl to step away from Yamato. She pushes everyone away and informs them that Yamato promised to stay with her and he is hers to begin with. Matsukaze starts mocking Momoyo for being an idiot as she had only treated Yamato like an underling. He further asks Momoyo the reason she doesn't want other girls to approach him even though she is a big sister to him. This makes Momoyo even more furious and she announces that Yamato likes her as a woman as well. Matsukaze starts yapping once again and tells her that she has already rejected him and it doesn't work like that. Men have their own needs and she can't keep messing with him like a toy. Yuki finally manages to shut Matsukaze's mouth. Momoyo starts walking away and Kazuko tries stopping her. She tells Kazuko not to call her a sister and treat her as another woman. Afterward, she picks Yamato up and is about to leave but Miyako confronts her and tells her that they won't let her approach Yamato. All the girls take their turns to pick Yamato up but end up dropping him when the other girl confronts them. After being dropped a couple of times, Yamato receives slight brain damage and finally returns back home. The next morning, everyone is eating breakfast and Yamato is still in his room. Kazuko notices that Yamato's breakfast is sitting on the table and puts one of her pork cutlets on his plate. The other girls repeat after her and fill his plate with pork cutlets. Kazuko tries to get the upper hand and puts Shoichi's cutlet on Yamato's plate as well. Matsukaze reveals that Yuki is the obvious winner as she is the one who made the cutlets in the first place. Momoyo gets pissed off and eats all the cutlets on Yamato's plate. Matsukaze starts confronting her but she hits him with a finger flick, making it crash into the wall. Afterward, the caretaker arrives and asks if Yamato has woken up. All the girls ran away in order to be the first one to check up on him. Everyone manages to step into the room at the same time and Momoyo hits them with an attack. She tells Yamato that it is better for him to rest in peace than be troubled by a couple of desperate girls. However, they all find out that it is only a dummy and the real Yamato is not present in the room. On the other hand, Yamato is by the riverside, thinking about whether the country is worth protecting or not. Suddenly, Matasauri arrives and starts asking about the stuff he is thinking about. Meanwhile, all the girls are cleaning the room after Momoyo messed it up with an attack. Unexpectedly, Kazuko finds his magazine collection and all the girls try to dig even deeper and find more stuff. Yuki manages to find a DVD, and everyone decides to have a look and figure out his obsessions. According to them, a wife has the right to inspect her husband's behavior. On the other hand, Matasauri shows pity that his group was dragged into such a mess. He informs him that it was their job to expose the magazine suppliers, but it was something bigger than they had anticipated. Yamato asks Matasauri about his views on this country and tells him that a girl he was fighting called it worthless, which made him rethink his decision. Matasauri tells him that he will only regret it in the future if he doesn't try something even though he couldn't. In the end it all comes down to self-satisfaction. Yamato mentions the incident with Miyako and how he only decided to help her so he would not feel guilty later. Matasauri explains that he must have been happy after saving the girl. And this feeling is what people call justice. On the other hand, all the girls are focusing on the video and can't believe the things their crush is into. However, they all are willing to try these things if Yamato asks them to. Momoyo manages to control her rage but finally ends up smashing the TV. She is pissed at the girls for being this obsessed with Yamato. They all start to confront her and, in the end, everyone challenges Momoyo to a duel. Surprisingly, she accepts and decides to take them all at the same time. Meanwhile, Matasauri advises Yamato to not care about whether the country is worthy or not and to focus on what his heart wants him to do. Suddenly, Taki's face starts showing up in all the media around the city and she warns all the citizens about the havoc she is about to create. The Prime Minister freaks out and orders to mobilize the JSDF. Later, Saki informs Taki that two companies or Narima army have been deployed around the Prime Minister's home. They think that the plan is smart, but it won't matter. On the other hand, the duel is finally starting and all the girls start fighting Momoyo. Meanwhile, all the delinquents of the city are gathered at one's place, who are led by Ryue. They started attacking the army stationed at the Prime Minister's residence. Their main purpose is to block the radio and freeze their chain of command with the sudden commotion. Meanwhile, the girls are getting beat up very badly. They make a plan to use Christiane as bait while Kazuko attacks Momoyo with her full strength. However, this is still not enough as Momoyo's attack buries Kazuko in the ground. Even though all the girls are no match for Momoyo and are beaten to a pulp, all of them get back up and tell the things they like about Yamato and the reason they are trying so hard. At last, Momoyo also reveals the things she likes about Yamato and informs them that she always depends on Yamato's kindness. He was a kid who used to follow her around and she used to like how things were. Until the day he confessed and she was scared to lose their previous relationship. However, seeing how the other girls were slowly taking Yamato away made her realize that she was in love with Yamato as well and wanted him for herself. 
Suddenly, Yamato arrives in front of them and tells everyone that he has decided to protect the country. The main reason is that his friends live in this country and most importantly, the people he loves. All the girls instantly agree to fight with him and the boys also arrive, wanting to lend a hand as well. Finally, the whole group gathers and their captain, Shoichi, orders everyone to march out. Ryuhei orders the delinquent to not use guns as the army will shoot them if they have guns. Suddenly, the boys arrive, ready to take the delinquents on. Meanwhile, Shakadu's underlings start fighting Christy and the others while Yuki decides to take on Shakadu himself. Yamato is fighting the delinquents using his mighty sword when suddenly, Taki arrives at the scene. Momoyo is present at the scene as well and their fight begins. After taking care of the delinquents, Yamato decides to fight Saki. On the other hand, Angel swallows some pills which makes her even stronger. All the other girls seem to be having a tough time but Miyako has a strategy to win. She throws rocks in Tatsuko's eyes which give her the advantage for a second, but she fails to end the battle. On the other hand, Taki is fighting with Momoyo and Saki's help allows her to predict all the moves. The loser can't hold his own for a few seconds and ends up kissing the ground soon after. While he is lying on the ground, Yamato remembers his father's words, who told him that a place where a person can't openly tell someone about his love has no future. Meanwhile, Matasauri infiltrates the Prime Minister's residence and reveals his face after taking off the bandit. The Prime Minister confessed that he allowed the immigrants to enter the country and in return, they agreed to vote for him and make him the Prime Minister. Everything was a failure as the JGSDF landed on the wrong location and they confronted the immigrants. They thought that the Prime Minister had betrayed them which resulted in the brutal battle between the two forces. Matasari tells the Prime Minister that someone else did the same thing and his name was Adolf Hitler. While Momoyo is fighting Taki, Ajaha decides to join the battle as well. She reveals that Taki's true object is not to assassinate the Prime Minister or destruction but to act as a villain. This way, she would become the enemy of all the citizens and everyone who doesn't respect the soldiers will start looking up to them. Taki says that she might not care about her life, but it is more painful to send the troops to their demise. She is doing all this to get the nation to cherish them back. Ikiro decides to join the fight as well and electrifies the idiots who fall for their trap. On the other hand, Yamato finally remembers that he made a promise to his dad that he would return to Japan when he became the prime minister. He gets back up and notices the dog they were tasked to catch earlier join the battle. However, he is not the only one as Hideo joins the battle as well. He tells Yamato that saving the world is important and it doesn't matter who does the job. Before leaving he gives Yamato a gift, it is Cookie who is completely fixed. His family managed to fix Cookie up with their high-end technology. Other schoolmates along with Kokoro also join the battle and start fighting the delinquents. Afterward, Yamato climbs a tank and tells everyone that he will be fighting for his loved ones and orders all the girls to win at all costs. However, they tell Yamato that if he is this determined, all he has to tell them is to sacrifice themselves for him as this is to be expected from all the martial artists. He finally realizes the theory behind it and asks everyone to sacrifice their lives for him. This somehow gives all the desperate girls a power-up and they become even more energetic. This time, all the girls manage to beat the opponents they were struggling against earlier. Subame joins the battle as well and starts assisting them with the fight. Meanwhile, Matasauri tells the Prime Minister that his conversation guiding the entry was leaked and it is all over the internet. He gets furious and tries to shoot Matasauri, but he dodges all the bullets and kicks him in his stomach. On the other hand, Momoyo starts feeling the power instability in Taki's attacks and she manages to land a brutal blow on her. Yamato manages to find Saki's location and plans to attack her. Surprisingly, Cookie is upgraded and turns into a robot that can be controlled by Yamato. He uses the robot and goes to attack Saki while Momoyo hits Taki with the Azuna drop once again but changes it into Kawakami Driver at the same second. The impact was enough to make them both unable to move. She tells Yamato that all her life energy has been used on instant recovery and she loses her eyes after confessing her love, signaling her demise. Everyone starts feeling sad and Yamato gives her one last kiss but surprisingly, this manages to wake her up. She tells Yamato that his kiss recovered her life energy which means that the princess was woken up by the prince's kiss. Everyone starts thinking that she is acting and wants to be kissed by Yamato. All the girls then ask Yamato about the one he loves and wants to protect the country for. He informs that the ones he loves the most are his hermit crabs, Yadon and Karin. He finally reveals that his love for his hermit crabs is so much that he can't stand it. They were the ones who truly healed him and the ones he truly loved. Everyone starts questioning his drive to fight for the country and he reveals that he only loves hermit crabs and nothing else. Everyone starts glaring at her with a dangerous look in their eyes and begs him to fall in love with them. This was all about Yamato and his love for hermit crabs. Which one of the girls will he choose to go out with? Comment plot below and let us know. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more plot recaps.